So we're back to our sports coupe group test. Today is all about fun, pure and simple. <laughs> it's watering on perfect. It's so much fun. A racetrack, three sets of tyres to tear up, and one question. Which of these cars is the most enjoyable, right at the limit and beyond? So we're going to start in the M2 because the conditions are playing absolutely into the hands of this car. It's really damp, really slippery, really tricky, and that means it's a huge amount of fun in this car. It's just got balance to spare, and it just allows you to just pick <laughs> stupid angles and just drive pretty much looking out of the side window the whole time. So on the road, this car, I haven't spent lots and lots of time in it. It's one of those cars that's just sort of, I've always just missed it for some reason, but I've driven them a bit. And although it's fun, it's got that BMW thing of not having much control over high frequency bumps, and it makes the car feel a little bit clumsy and bigger than you would expect because it's such a compact thing but take away the bumps and the cameras and all that stuff on a really smooth track and you're left with something that's so much fun balance is really good so you can just turn the thing all the time it doesn't seem to understeer that much even in these conditions and that means you can straight away agitate the car as you turn it in and then use the power even here through quick quick corners. you've just got so much torque and power you can just hang it out i mean in these conditions it's fantastic it's really interesting these cars because they're all so so different but today in these conditions the m2 can really just shine. <laughs> so away from the pressure of setting a lap time, we don't concentrate quite so much on the slightly weak brakes that this car's got. It's just, that is frustrating, I have to say. But you get to concentrate on the good stuff. So the balance, fantastic. The engine, it's not, doesn't feel crazily quick. <laughs> but it gives you real progression. The throttle response is actually really good for a turbo motor. Gearbox, again, manual not the quickest, but it's just so much fun using a manual box. I just don't care about that last half a second when you just got so much more involvement with a manual box. So yeah. I know it's not very scientific and I do have some issues with this car on the road but on a damp track though it's it's bordering on perfect it's so much fun the M2 loves these conditions and is a hoot to drive the brakes are an annoyance but this short wheelbase car finds a serenity you wouldn't credit at the limit it's big big fun and an extremely tough act to follow This could get ugly. It's one of those days at Anglesey where one minute it's pouring with rain, the next it's nice and windy and dry, and the track dries up. So we've had the M2 <laughs> in the soaking wet, and now TTRS in the dry. Okay, so a TT in the dry sounds like a recipe for understeer and frustration, doesn't it? That's, that's the old stereotype of Audis. But actually, this car doesn't quite conform to those stereotypes. The TTRS still has that. If you push properly, properly hard, it wants to push more than anything. It reverts to type, I guess. But this car actually does some things really well. 
and if you get the turning phase right, there's this nice little window where you get the front tyres loaded but not overloaded, and then you come off the power and the car actually does help you at the rear. It just turns you in, stops that understeer really taking hold. And that actually, if you get it right, feels quite satisfying and sort of, it's a different feeling to a rear wheel drive car, but it's, it's quite fun because you're just making the car do what you want to do, but everything is less exaggerated. So you need less correction. You've just got to be patient with the car all the time let it take what take its stance if you like and just work with that the problem is trying to get the car to do that on every corner for one lap is hard to try and do it every corner for a 20 minute track day session or something is almost impossible and that's a real shame because when it works it's really good and so there there is a good car in here a really fun adjustable chassis but they've just not quite had the balls to let it come out so you just get a taste of it which almost makes it worse than if it was just a horrible understeery pig it's not that at all and there's so much good stuff the engine is absolutely lovely it sounds fantastic and it's so quick gearbox is good brakes very good much better than the bms which are still pretty rubbish but now you can see the tyres are hot, circuit's dry, and only through the quick corners can I really agitate the car into taking the angle that I want. So it's a completely different experience to an M2 in the wet, obviously. Some of the things, the quality's just as high. The engine's more exciting, definitely. And the car feels smaller, more like a sports car, if you like. But it's just a shame the fun that I felt in this car earlier in the damp it's not quite there in the dry it's like they've almost built a really 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 good car and then at the last minute they've sort of bottled out so close yet still so far the TTRS has a storming drivetrain and shows flashes of brilliance but it's a patchy performer and sooner or later you'll get tired of trying to navigate around its inbuilt understeer and just lose interest. There's a great car somewhere in here, but right now it's rattling the bars of its cage, not able to break free. Our final car is the 718 Cayman S, a car unshackled and able to express itself at will. So we're getting all the seasons today. So welcome to summer at Agnesy Ray Circuit. Now in the Cayman S, sorry, the 718 Cayman S. So anyway, the engine, I'm afraid, I don't want to bang on too much about it, but it's not a sweet, singing, absolutely beautifully crisp flat six. And if you've experienced the box draw came and with that engine, you will be disappointed. You, know? you just will. I don't care what anyone says about the torque and this and that and the other. This engine, it's a good engine. It's impressive what it can do. The torque's great, revs pretty well. It's not the same. It's just a motor. It's, it's not a part of the experience. And you can hear it for yourself. I don't know what it sounds like outside, but inside, it's just an engine. It's like some sort of generator. Okay, that's enough about the engine great things about this car, the gearbox, the manual box is so sweet. <laughs> the, ba <laughs> the balance is really good. I mean, we're in the dry now. And I guess what I expected was somewhere between the hooliganism of the M2 
at that sort of precise, really pure cut speed of the TT. But it's actually better than that because it's it's so well balanced, it's so nimble, it feels so much lighter and lower. And it just feels more like a bespoke sports car. I mean, that's what it is. It's a bespoke sports car rather than something that's had sports car performance and components added to it. So in terms of the quality of what this car does, be it sliding around like this, or trying to be precise and quick, I think it's on another level to the other two, actually. It makes the M2 feel tall and slightly out of control of its body movements. It makes the TT that's really close to being something good just feel slightly clumsy and a bit mean. Like mean as in it doesn't want you to actually be fully involved in what's going on and it gets a bit annoyed with you if you try and impose yourself on it. This car, <laughs> it's like a party the whole time. Uh, yeah, super impressive chassis, super impressive car. Please bring back the old engine. <laughs> I know you can't, but just find a way. This four-cylinder motor, it's not a Cayman engine. It's barely a Porsche engine. It's not right. The car, the car is right. Now it just needs an engine that lives up to what it can do. I didn't want to find myself lamenting the old honey smooth flat six. It's such a cliche. But you know what? The 718 Cayman S is so good that it's simply out of reach for the TTRS and even the highly talented M2. But right now it's a Michelin starred meal with a great dollop of cheap ketchup rudely drowning the finest ingredients known to mankind. Progress is inevitable and necessary, I get that, but unless you judge an engine by how it responds in fifth gear at 2000 RPM, well, this new flat four can only be a huge disappointment. That the Cayman S wins this test even carrying such a massive handicap shows just how spectacular the rest of it is.